Hello once again everybody, I'm Jake Lucci and welcome to my video coaching newsletter. The title of today's video coaching newsletter is Prospects, Stay Committed So You Can Commit. I have a quote I wrote on this topic and then I have an email that was sent in by a parent talking about some of the regrets that he has for him and his son and his family during the college recruiting process. A couple times that they did not stay committed to the college recruiting process so we'll see what he says but first... The quote says, prospects that stay committed during the college recruiting process are the ones that commit. Having done this for almost a decade, I can tell you that only the strong survive. Prospects must dedicate themselves to building their social media channels and their footprint online so that college coaches can learn more about them before deciding to bring them on campus. Research is typically done on recruits at all levels. Coaches do their homework. This is especially true for prospects entering the final 12 to 24 months of their college recruiting process. You wanna keep good people in your corner, not just good coaches, but people that understand how the process actually works. At the end of the day, it's the prospect's choice to decide if they wanna take control of their process or leave it up to chance. At LPG, I highly advise our prospects to take control of their process so they don't look back with regret. This email says, hi Jake, I've listened to how you talk about college recruiting by watching your newsletters over the past few months. It seems that there is an underlying truth about what you talk about. You're referring to how long the process is and how consistency over the long run will give kids the best chance to earn a college scholarship. Well, that's true. Consistency is the key in this game, and I do talk a lot about consistency in the college recruiting process being one of the one of the main keys and reasons why prospects at LPG continually sign college scholarships. So at times you're not seeing the results or you're not seeing what is being done. And the truth of the matter is, is if you're putting stuff out there on social media, even after a few months, even after a couple of years, a year or two, it's continuing to get played on social media, it's continuing to make its rounds. And so videos that were made for kids, maybe their freshman or sophomore year, those are still having an effect on the college recruiting process for that kid even during his junior and senior year because college coaches are gonna have more information to look up about this certain prospect. And so if they're going to offer a scholarship, they're gonna feel more comfortable typically. Um, the other thing is, is college coaches do like to see kids in person, but they can't see everyone in person. A lot of schools are only gonna recruit from their region. And so when they do that, it's them competing against the other schools in their region. And if prospects had the ability to find exposure at other places and in other places of the country, they may have more offers sooner. But the main thing is, is staying committed to the process because you just never know when a scholarship is gonna happen. Some people verbally commit freshman, sophomore year. Some it takes till the summer before they go to college. I was one where, the only time that I got my scholarship was the summer right before I went to, to school. Like I signed my scholarship in like July slash August, right before school started in September. So I speak from experience that most kids are actually not even gonna commit until right before they go to college. So a lot of parents will get impatient with the process and they think, well, I only have 12 months to commit. Well, you still have a year. Like that's a pretty good amount of time. Although you wanna be obviously making sure things are moving in the right direction. If you're a junior and you have 24 months, if you're a sophomore and you have 36 months, the clock is ticking. It's not like you can sit there and do nothing because if you're doing nothing, then there are other kids getting money. There are other people getting those scholarship dollars. He goes on to say, I'm one of those parents that waited too long to start my child's recruiting process. He is now a freshman in college because the offers he received in high school were very small and weren't to schools that he was interested in. I'm writing to you to affirm what you've talked about before, that if kids don't stay committed to the process and parents, they won't end up committing anywhere. It's true, you have to stay committed to the process. And we have a lot of prospects, quite honestly, that I really want to see them more involved in the process. A lot of times when you're working with kids and families, the parent seems to take on that leadership role of moving the ball forward, and that's okay. But at the end of the day, it's the prospect's choice. It's the prospect's decision on where they wanna to go to school. And the only reason that we're even doing all of this is because of them. Uh, the family obviously is gonna be benefited by, by people and by, or by kids getting, getting scholarships. The parents will be benefited, the siblings will be benefited, but at the end of the day, it's really all about the kid. And so what I like to see our prospects do is I like to see them involved in their recruiting process. I'm okay working with parents, obviously I've done it for a long time, but I think that kids really need to be the ones that are pushing their process, asking the right questions, and especially if they have an advisor in their corner, uh, I think that that is really a huge advantage, uh, comparatively speaking, to just having a summer coach or a high school coach, which 
those coaches have so many kids to deal with, it's tough to do anything on the college recruiting side simply because of the time that it takes to find the right fit. And the other thing is don't get confused. If you don't hear from college coaches, you know, within 12 months of you of you getting ready to go to college, not all hope is lost. I mean, there are so many times and so many coaches that will wait to the very end, especially lower level schools, because they're competing with like the division one. So there's no real point for division twos, division threes, lower level JUCOs to offer kids too early because it's kind of like showing your hand. Like you may be able to get some good commitments early, but those lower level schools are competing against the division one allure, right? They're competing against kids that are holding out to go to division one. And so if a division two or division three NAIA JUCO program offers a kid early and that kid accepts it, they can still retroactively accept an, an offer to a division one program or a different level. And so it's pretty cutthroat. It's obviously a cutthroat business, but at the same time, it does make sense if you know what to look for. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video coaching newsletter. Prospects stay committed so you can commit. I'm Jake Lucci, and if you're interested in becoming a prospect, make sure you visit our website, lucciprospectgroup.com. We can help you with all things college recruiting and help you get to the next level. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Jake Lucci, and we'll talk to you soon.